It's Greg Miles, a.k.a. the Cypher Wolf here. Uh, so, I'm looking on YouTube at, you know, what video has the most views, and uh, the last one was a Magic Gathering video, so I decided, hey, what the heck, might as well do another one of those. So, you know, doing one of those. Um, excuse me. Um, so, basically what I'm going to try to do here is tell you guys about a deck that I'm running, and I'll try to do more of these. Um, so, I guess, First thing I should do here is uh, sort of kind of explain how this deck got started. So, rewind a few years back when Shards of Alara was coming out, I saw a preview for Cruel Ultimatum. I was like, oh my god, there's one awesome card, because I am a Timmy. And pretty much Cruel Ultimatum combined, like, all of the things my favorite cards at the time were doing into one beautiful, glorious card. You had ridiculous amounts of draw. You had, you know, direct damage. You had life, dank, life gain. You had, you know, let's see, <laughs> this card, life gain. You had bringing things back from the graveyard. You had all of that. All of that. Oh, yeah, and it got rid of the creature for you. And, again, not only did it get rid of the creature, it made your opponent sacrifice the creature. I mean, yeah, you had everything. All of these things. You had, like, six different cards wrapped into one. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. That right there. That's all awesome, dude. That is so completely awesome, bro. That's, like, the most awesome thing, like, ever, ever did, ever, so anyway, um, I, I, so, I pretty much spent a bunch of time just playing with the Cruel Ultimatum, and what made it even more interesting is that I figured out a bunch of ways to break that guard, which was already sort of kind of ridiculously powerful. Oh man, people hated me. <laughs> so um anyway, so that's pretty much what this deck is about. It's pretty much breaking cruel ultimatum. Now also this deck started out originally as sort of kind of a Grixis deck because while everybody else is playing Jones, I love Grixis. But now that it's out I sort of kinda of started to add now it's out of standard, add things that are also out of standard. Um, to make things better. Um, not to say that I didn't do that before, because I don't really play in tournaments, but, um, I just sort of kind of did that. So, um, that's how this deck got started. Um, so I will now take some time to, you know, ex explain what's in the deck. So, um, I'm recording this first, so I'll give you guys a second to check out the deck list which I will have as a screen right about now. Yeah, get on that future, me. Just do that. Screen, deck, there you go. Um, so, yeah. So, again, this deck is really, it, it's a control deck, and it's really about breaking Cruel Ultimatum. Just making that card sick and ridiculous. I'm finding different ways to do that. Um, and I also like it because it's a thinking deck. Y you can't just rule this deck out. You have to think with it. So, the first way I break Cruel Ultimatum is by twin casting it. Two, two, two Cruel Ultimatum.
him for the price of, well, a little bit over the price of one. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, you, you twin cast and ba-boom. Oh, yeah, uh, just for the record, I could also make another deck. I, I, I just had a thought of something else I could do with it. Using, uh, Jura of the Gen 2 to sort of kind of get it out there and, and Actually, I think I did that once. But anyway, that's not this deck. Um, so anyway, what you do is you twin cast it, which basically means now this is for a lot of mana. But the the way the deck runs is that there's other stuff you have to protect yourself and, and other things you can do to sort of kind of of, of protect yourself until you can get to breaking it, breaking the broken. So. You, you have your cruel ultimatums, and you, you, you pop those out whenever you, you have them, when, when you want them. I don't really have any acceleration. Most of the time with a deck like this, I'd have acceleration. I don't, because when I started playing it, I found out that I really didn't need it, because this is really a control deck, which means that if anybody's going to beat you, it's going to take a long time for them to beat you, and by the time they get that close, theoretically you'll have the mana to cast Cruel Ultimatum and possibly cast it in the Broken style that I'm going to mention, and it won't matter, because, again, that card is sick. Sick. It's a sickness. Um, so... The way... So, anyway, the first way... Well, let me start with this sort of kind of early game way this thing works out. The early game, you're really trying to focus more so on, on protecting yourself and making sure that you don't die. Um, y you have your twin cast and your echo mages for that. The cool thing about twin cast and echo mage is that they also work really well with the other stuff in the deck that would help protect you. Like you know, you could echo mage a Grixis charm and you know get something cool going there, or if you have a fully... One of the things I love is just having a fully powered Echo Mage and, and just lightning bolt and something like, yeah, that's nine damage! Go, Echo Mage! Woo! Um, so you have Echo Mage, you can really do that. Um, and also, the really cool thing about Cruel Ultimatum, and I have... There are other cards that can do this, but I, I, I sort of kind of really like... Is it Kronarch? Because it's sort of kind of the simplest and doesn't require that much maneuvering. There are other cards that can do this, like Eternal Witness, but then if I had an Eternal Witness, I would have to bring in a, another color green, which I guess I could, and I have done previously. And it's not actually that hard for me to do that, because I have cards that will do it, and I know how to go about doing it, but I, I really just didn't want the hassle at some point when I was making this deck. I should also mention that this isn't actually the deck I used to use, but I sort of kind of just made this deck from memory and tested it out a little bit on Moto. Um, but, yeah. Um, but anyway, you, you have your Is It Cronarch, who pretty much brings back your sorcery. So, basically, one of the fun things I love to do is cast a Cruel Ultimatum, and use that Cruel Ultimatum to bring back Is It Cronarch from the graveyard, then use Is It Cronarch to bring back Cruel Ultimatum from the graveyard, and then play another Cruel Ultimatum and repeat the process ad infinitum, or at least until my opponent's, you know, not flapping gill anymore. With the belly upside down ish. <laughs> um, and again, Chris, is it Cronarch can be used to bring back, you know, other other stuff that you're you're using like uh one of the one of my favorite things to do is people are like you have nothing, and then I go and play Izzy Kronark, and then, you know, bring back something like a Grixis Charm, and go, yes, I do! Grixis Charm! Boom! Um, so, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, also, because this deck started out as Grixis, and I don't know, I always sort of kind of in my head thought that Charge of Alar sort of kind of had one planeswalker who represented each plane, and for me, the guy who represented Grixis was always, always, always Nicol Bolas. 
So, yeah, I've got him, and basically when I was trying to figure out how to do this, I just decided to throw in Jace for a bunch of other reasons. Um, a lot of this deck revolves around bouncing your opponent's stuff around, but the cool thing is that the way I have these lands set up, they also can be used to bounce stuff, so if you have to, you can bounce a land and, and get some life, which is cool, you know, again... A, a lot of the deck revolves around outlasting your opponent in the early stages of the game. So, you know, bouncing a land and getting an extra, you know, one or two life per turn helps in that regard. Um, you know, I mean, there are some game, games where I, I will gain, like, ten life in one game just by, you know... It, it, and that's one of the reasons why I have the Ravonica lands. Is because they also help in that respect where I can, you know, throw a Ravonica land out there, bounce, you know, one of the Vindicar Life lands, and, you know, just do that again over and over again, sort of kind of slowly gain life, which, again, helps in the early game before you actually get the Cruel Ultimatum out there and can go all Cruel Ultimatum, because, Um... Let's see, that's most of what's in here. Also, the spells in here are really sort of flexible, which is why I like them. Again, this is a thinking deck where you can't just play stuff and go, yeah, you know, every game is going to be a little bit different with this deck because with cards like Cryptic Command and Grixis Charm and Lightning Bolt, you have so many options on how to defend yourself. Um... So, yeah. So, let me talk about the sideboard a little bit, and then I'll uh, sort of kind of finish this thing off. Um, basically, what I was trying to do with the sideboard is... Com I have another deck that's really close to this deck. Actually, it was really just me sort of kind of trying to upgrade the, the previous deck I had with Zendikar Deck Tech. Um... Mainly your Blood Chief Ascensions. Um, and so, what I would do is I would put Blood Chief Ascension in there and Blightning in, and it becomes almost a new deck where you still have that control element in there, but it's really more so about making your opponent discard and suffer for discarding, and yes, I am a griefer. Mwah, ah, 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 ah. Yes, yes, griefing. All right, um, so, yeah, um, when I was making the, the sideboard, I, I wanted to put both Lilani and, J and Jace in there, um, but the way the cards worked, I just decided to bump Jace up into the main deck. Um, the cool thing about that is that Lilani and Jace have this really cool combo going on where they feed each other, where you can use Jace's or at least, at least what I like to call them, Jace Classic, because I get a four new Jace, as most people can't. And it's not Wizard's fault. Um, so, y y y you have Jace Classic and Lonnie of this, and they have this really cool combo where they sort of kind of feed each other, where you can use Jace's first ability, and use Lelania, and it's almost like his first ability is his second, because you have Lelania making your opponent discard cards. Almost. It, it, it especially works when your opponent has an empty hand. It, it's almost sort of kind of like a quasi-mill thing going on, where they draw a card and discard it before they can even use it. Um, again, which helps with Blood Chief Ascension. Um... Also, I also put the Signets in there because, again, this deck is kind of slow, and there might be some opponents where, you know, you, you need a little bit of extra speed. Um, so I put the Signets in there. Um, let's see, what else? And Volcanic Fallout. Uh, again, it really depends upon what decks you're using, but there are a lot of decks out there who who, who are super, super aggro and, like, get out, like, three or four, like, two twos in, in, in three turns, and 
you know, try to hit you that way. And this deck, the original deck, wasn't really designed to handle that. Um, it's really designed to sort of kind of take its time and, and, you know, bounce one or two creatures a turn and, and then go all out with the cruel ultimatums. So you end up so basically what I did was I put a couple of volcanic fallouts in there just so that you know if you you have something like that on in the early turns you have something to do about it and the same thing goes with, with the Kree of Pain the Kree of Pain was one of my favorite cards back in the day and I, I just I'll get into why that card is so awesome later I, I, I will get into why that card is so awesome later when I'm making another deck where I, I, I'm basically going to try to remake Mindbender one of these days. I haven't played with Mindbender in a while, but it was awesome. It, it was also probably the deck that got me interested in Magic. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's pretty much what I've done. Thanks. Uh, bye.